Okay, this week we are going to talk about the French and Indian War. And uh, we'll talk about how it got started. We'll talk about some of the major battles, some of the results. What did the North America look like before the French and Indian War? What did it look like after the French and Indian War? So let's get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about today is how did the French and Indian War start? Well, it's important to note one thing right off the bat. The French and the British didn't get along. In fact, for most of history, the French and the British did not get along. And that is true as well in the 1750s. And so the British had their 13 colonies that we've been learning about for the last couple of weeks all along the east coast of North America. The French had the interior part of what is today North America for where they were, uh, they had settlements and eventually they built forts there because they wanted to keep the British from moving into that territory where they would trade furs with Native Americans. So France builds these forts to keep the English from moving further west. And this made the British really furious. And so what did they do? They send out a young, um, a young uh, captain in the army named George Washington, who's only 22 years old, and his job is to deliver a pro, an, an official protest to the French government in 1753, basically saying, stop building forts because we, the British, don't appreciate it and we want to move west. Well, uh, George Washington and his men, before they get to Fort Duquesne, where they're to deliver the message, they stumble upon a small French force, and George Washington basically has his men fight against the French, and they have a little mini battle, and this mini battle is the first battle of the French and Indian War. The French and Indian War has unofficially begun in 1753. Most Native Americans uh, had to choose one side or the other. So the war is between, the war is called the, the French and Indian War, but the war is not between the French and the Indians. The war is between the French and the British. It's called the French and Indian War because the French were fighting with the Indians against the British. So uh, most Native Americans, because the French treated them well, they remember from back at the beginning of the year, we learned about the different countries that came to the Americas and how they treated Native Americans. The French were the best because the French treated them, the Native Americans, like they were regular people. They would trade with them. They were friendly with them. Uh, the French really wanted furs that the Native Americans were able to get for them, and so the French would trade lots of different things to the Native Americans. The, the English, on the other hand, were trying to settle in this area and take the Native Americans' land, and oftentimes were at war with the Native Americans. And so the Native Americans, naturally, when they came time to choosing sides during the French and Indian War, they took the side of the French. Uh, the picture that you see here is a drawing of a computer... Uh, computer drawing of Fort Duquesne, which uh, Fort Duquesne sat where three rivers came together in what is modern-day Pittsburgh. Those three rivers were the, the uh, Monongahela, the uh, Ohio, and the Juniata. And they all three came together at one spot, and that was a very good strategic place to put a fort because no ships could get past where you were there. There were several battles, there were many battles during the French and Indian War, but we're going to highlight two of them. Uh, number one, we're going to highlight a French victory, and we're going to highlight a British victory. And the number one battle that we're going to look at is the battle, uh, the battle of Fort Duquesne. After George Washington's men went out and wiped out a small French force, they went back and the French basically said, look, we're going to keep our forts and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, the British got really mad, and so they sent a general named General Braddock with George Washington as one of his um, officers to take Fort Duquesne from the French. Well, General Braddock and his men were taken by surprise by the French, and they are wiped out. In fact, General Braddock is killed, and it's only because George Washington, a young George Washington, uses some um, very smart... Uh, tactics under pressure that he is able to escape with some of the men without losing their lives or being captured. And so the French win the Battle of Fort Duquesne very easily. Now later on in the war, near the end of the war, there was another major battle at Quebec, and the British were able to win that battle. The, the British end up winning the Battle of Quebec near the end of the war when the, the 
momentum has swung to the British. The reason why the French won quite a few early battles in this war is because they used great battle tactics. And the, the main battle tactic that they used was called guerrilla warfare. And guerrilla warfare is not listed on the Prezi here, but you should probably write that down somewhere so you don't forget that. Guerrilla warfare is where the French and the Indians they were fighting with would literally hide behind trees and rocks to fight against the British. Whereas the British went in traditional battle lines where they lined up shoulder to shoulder with their bright red coats and would march into battle that way. Now you can obviously think about it's much easier to hit a target when you have a whole bunch of people in red coats standing shoulder to shoulder and you can aim at that rather than people that are ducking behind trees and behind rocks and so this guerrilla warfare that the French and the Indians were using was much more effective in the early battles of the war. In a, in a minute or two we'll talk about how eventually the British just had too many men and too many resources and even though they were fighting in a traditional style rather than this guerrilla warfare they would eventually win the war. So uh, as I just mentioned ultimately the British have more weapons, more men, more supplies and they just outlast the French and the Indians and they would end up winning the war. In 1763 the peace treaty is called the, the Treaty of Paris is signed and the British and the French end the, the French and Indian War. I also should mention that there was another name for the war it was called the Seven Years War uh, because according to um, according to the times of when the war was from Seven, it ended in 1763, and um, officially it starts in 1755-56. Uh, the other thing that happens as a result of the war is Native Americans basically feel abandoned by the French. The French who are fighting with them, after they lose the war, they lose all their territory in the Americas to the British. They leave, and the Native Americans are on their own. And the Native Americans basically start to take the war to the British themselves. And they do this by having small war parties invade British homesteads. And later on this week, uh, when you look at some of the local history from Lebanon County, you'll see how some of these local um, war parties of Native Americans were invading British homesteads right here in Lebanon County. And that uh, the local British colonists that were living around here, like Conrad Weiser, and um, they needed to basically defend their homes against the Native Americans that were raiding them. Uh, the other thing that happens is uh, Pontiac's war basically was uh, Pontiac was a chief of the Native Americans and he and his men continued to fight uh, even though the war was over. They continued to fight against the colonists. They would continue to raid homes and eventually the colonists were crying out that they needed protection from the Native Americans and so the British government struck a deal known as the Compromise of 1763 which we'll look at in just one second. If you take a look at this map you can see North America before the French and Indian War and after the French and Indian War and you can see the huge amount of influence and territory that the French have in this before map. Okay, All of the orange here is the French controlled territory before the war. After the war there is virtually no French territory any that is left. You can see some French territory down here um, in Hispaniola, but you do not see any French territory up in what is today the United States or Canada. So all of this in on the first map you see all of this area right here was that with the stripes was what was disputed by Great Britain and by France. And this is ultimately what the French and Indian War is fought over is this area right here. Now as I mentioned before um, in order to appease the Indians and keep the Indians out and to help the Native Americans, uh, to, to keep the Native Americans from invading the British homesteads and to keep the British settlers and colonists safe, the proclamation of 1763 is issued by the king. And what the proclamation basically says is that no colonists, you can see here the 13 colonies, no British colonists were allowed to cross the Appalachian Mountains, which were right here. And that all of this territory out here, which had just been fought for, this territory that was gained from the French was going to be left for the Indians. Now that sounds like a nice fair thing for the Indians. However, 
the colonists got really mad by this. And the reason why the colonists were mad is because they felt like they just fought a war for the last seven or eight years and to gain this territory, and now the king was saying they couldn't have the territory. So as I just mentioned, British said the British said that the colonists, the king said the colonists could not settle west of the Appalachian Mountains. So right along this line, no colonists were allowed to settle out here. As I just mentioned as well, the colonists got upset because they wanted to, they believed that the reason why they fought the French and Indian War with the French was to be, gain, be able to gain the ability to move out here and expand westward. Because of how upset the colonists were and how mad they were and how this kind of pushed the colonists towards revolution, this is really the first time when the British colonists begin to call themselves Americans. And so we're at 1763. It's 13 years until the Declaration of Independence is signed and the American Revolution happens. But 13 years before that, in some small way, the American Revolution begins when the proclamation of 1763 is, is issued by the king and the colonists first begin to call themselves Americans. So go ahead and uh, you can watch this again if you need to, but you want to go ahead and take the quiz that it goes along with this Prezi.